which the, ma the manufacturers call viral pellets, but without ever looking for viral particles in, in them, because probably they know so well that they, are not, they will not find them, uh, using the electron microscope to confirm, to verify the hypothetical presence of such particles. Viral load <coughs> means <coughs> the presence of virus particles in the peripheral blood. There is a scientific word of viremia, which is frequently used too. And it's true that in the studies of leukemia in mice and in chicken, viremia is spectacular. Like it's extremely easy to demonstrate by electron microscopy. So when I was still working with Charlotte Friend at Sloan Kettering on our leukemic mice, we really had n no difficulty to demonstrate by electron microscopy massive amounts of very typical retroviral particles on a few ml of the blood from these leukemic mice. This is an old picture just published in, uh, in uh, 1965 representing a highly purified collection of typical uh, retroviral particles isolated and purified from the blood of leukemic mice. I put one arrow there to indicate that there is a teeny little something in the middle there which I don't feel is a virus, just to, to, to further stress that this was an extremely successful uh, uh, exercise in purifying retroviruses from the blood of leukemic mice. Now, <coughs> that was extremely easy to do. It was about two days' work. Uh, One question uh, electron microscopy could not resolve is whether or not all these particles are exogenous or endogenous. Uh, I do not know. Unquestionably, electron microscopy is totally unable to recognize the difference between uh, exogenous or endogenous retroviruses. What you have just seen is in mice, but as Steinbeck said, f of mice and men, nobody has ever succeeded in repeating this type of observation using the blood of AIDS patients, even if you select patients uh, identified as having a supposedly high viral load. I made that statement during the big conferences in South Africa uh, in 2000, and uh, I was expecting some strong reactions from the orthodoxy, but I haven't heard anything. It went through smoothly. <laughs> Shortly after that, um, from London, and John Shenton could tell us more about that, but a, a very significant reward was offered to whoever would demonstrate in the blood of AIDS patient a, 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 a isolation and purification of retrovirus comparable to what you have just seen in leukemic mice. That award was never claimed. Now, in 1983, as all of you know very well, a, quote, quote, history-making paper was published at, at Institut Pasteur in Paris. Françoise barré sinoussi was the first author together, of course, with Luc Montagnier and several of their collaborators. 
the strength of that paper was supposedly relying on recognition of an en the reverse transcriptase enzyme activity on one side and electron microscopy of retroviral particles on the other side. Indeed, in that paper, there is a figure two, which you see right now, and in which you can see viral particles in various stages of the budding process on the surface of a cell which actually is a lymphocyte. Such electron microscope evidence is, in my view, totally unquestionable as demonstrating that these cultures did contain indeed retroviral particles. And we have to do something with that. We cannot ignore it. <coughs> the budding particles you have just seen are indeed extremely comparable to budding particles we were seeing 40 years back in mice. And you see four examples of this process of the assembly of virus particles on the surface of murine leukemia cells. What, it, what was important also in all these observations was the fact that quite obviously all these cells, budding viruses on their surface, were looking like perfectly healthy, viable cells. Uh, all the electron microscopy on these uh, leukemic cells uh, were un confirming without any question that these viruses are not cytolytic. They do not kill the cells they multiply in. So they are not cytolytic, and that was perhaps the first argument which made me explode <laughs> in 1984, perhaps, uh, when I heard that a suggestion was made by Robert Gallo that uh, the uh, infection by the retrovirus was probably destroying the, the CD4 cells. That doesn't make any sense in retrovirology because it's quite clear that these viruses do not destroy, do not kill the cells they infect. It's not a cytolytic virus. These cells in the Pasteur paper are cord blood lymphocytes. They are not cells from the pre-AIDS patient they were studying. And if you read carefully that paper, you shall not find any uh, evidence for demonstrating that these observed viruses originated from that patient. They are observed on the surface of cord blood lymphocytes originating from the placenta. And it's very well known for a long time that the human placenta is extremely rich in, guess what, in HERV. And therefore, lymphocytes originating from the placenta uh, are most likely bringing with them uh, HERVs which have been observed in the by, by the Pasteur people in their admixed cultures. Luc Montagnier indicated in another paper, incidentally, that if they would try to repeat that experiment using not cord blood lymphocyte, but uh, peripheral blood lymphocyte, it wouldn't work. So the contribution from the placenta was essential. So I feel to some summarize a little bit my uh, suggestion to this morning, I feel that in two most important aspects of HIV AIDS research, to use the classic, the today's terminology, in two different aspects, the role of HERVs has appeared 
most important for a proper interpretation of the available data. In the study of the viral load, in which most likely circulating DNA containing 8% of uh, uh, endogenous retroviral sequence has been misinterpreted as an HIV viral load, which is a total scientific nonsense, and also in basic, basic science work in the Pasteur classic paper of 1983, where the presence of unquestionable retroviruses meant nothing in terms of AIDS research, but was explainable most easily by underlining the fact that the cells were mixed, admixed with lymphocytes from placenta origin carrying obviously uh, human endogenous retroviruses with them. Let's stress in concluding that so-called HIV has never been neither isolated nor purified directly from any AIDS patient. Now you perhaps will ask me, where are all these pictures, the media, the, all the magazines are loaded with very colorful representation of HIV. They are not completely, completely the result of uh, uh, imagination. They derive from actual EM pictures of retroviruses, which have been observed most exclusively in cell culture, but never, never, never in one single AIDS patient. And then these pictures are, of course, embellished by computer graphic, putting very flashy colors in it, and making the public most ready to accept uh, these as the evidence for the existence of a so-called HIV. The difficulties to isolate and purify a so-called HIV have, had been initially stressed by Eleni Papadopoulos, as early as 1993 in a classic biotechnology paper you probably are all aware of. But such difficulties are best explained by recognizing the fact that a so-called HIV simply does not exist as stated as early as 1994, I guess for the first time by Stefan Lanka. Recognizing the non-existence of so-called HIV and the role of H uh, non-existence of so-called HIV and the role of HERV in clinical and basic science studies should definitely redirect AIDS research, and redirecting re AIDS research could not be better done uh, than by following the uh, the indication for the the chemical causes of AIDS, which were so masterfully uh, developed and explained in a paper Duisburg, Kernlein and Rasnik published in 2003. The future of AIDS research should be obviously cons cons concentrating on the effect of drugs, on the effects of antiretroviral medication, and on factors of nutrition. This new orientation of AIDS research would make therapy considerably cheaper and would make prevention extremely easy. So I don't want to finish this without uh, taking the opportunity to make a little, little pub <laughs> for the book I published last year in collaboration with Jean-Claude Rousset, a journalist from Paris, who is a scientific journalist from Paris. And uh, the book was initially published in French under the title of Les Dix Plus Gros Mensonges sur le Sida. And though in English it's Ten Lies About AIDS. I was hoping to have copies of the book to put on the table here today, but they never came. Uh, instead, I put on the table little pamphlets uh, that will help those of you who wish to buy it uh, to find the proper indication of where to get it from. Uh, Amazon.com is probably the 